the one you lost. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this artwork of Mume from Hololive. So once again, starting off with the head, kind of shaping it. I, I have a uh, reference that I found on Pinterest for this one. And I kind of wanted to get the body shape right, so a good reference was super important. Um, we kind of have this uh, to the side kind of profile view with three quarters view head. And we're going for kind of like a the classic anime cliche of food, bath, or me. Which is a kind of a play on words whenever I said food, bath, or may because the character's name is Mume. I'm hilarious. Please give me likes and money. But in all seriousness, um, I'm, I'm really proud of how this one turned out. It may not be my best, but it's still, I, I still feel I did a pretty good job on this one. Um, I ended up not starting off with the background, but I ended up adding one later. The issue was I forgot to record myself making the background. So I'm very sorry. Um, if you take a look at the background, you'll notice that the, purport, that the perspective isn't 100% correct. And that was kind of my mistake. I didn't use my perspective ruler like I usually did. I kind of just eyeballed it. So there are a few things that are kind of wrong. But for the most part, the sketch turned out really solid. And it's very cute in my opinion. So I kind of struggled at first to really get the eyes to look right. And kind of that soft facial expression, which everyone loves. The My favorite thing about Mume is just her dumb catchphrase of, Oh, hi! Because, uh... That's adorable, and it doesn't really have to be anything more complex than that. So I went for kind of like the, the ponytail, and um, that, that's one of my favorite hairstyles to put Mume in is the ponytail, just because ponytails are cute, and no one can tell me otherwise. If you notice my voice is a little bit hoarse, is because I'm still technically sick or recovering from being sick, so sorry in advance if I sound a little bit weird, but um, that's kind of the whole situation right now. So now we're going to start doing some light carving and kind of playing out the character a bit more. So here we go. I'm going to put a multiply layer on top of the folder to make sure it covers everything. And we're going to start carving out the bright parts of the artwork. Light carving is one of my favorite techniques. It really helps you plan things out much quicker. The issue I did end up having with this artwork was I, I put the light source on top, but it looks like it's coming from two directions. And I think I give myself a pass on that one because it's more of like a room light. So all the light is coming from above her. Um, but in all honesty, it is a bit, it is a bit wrong if I'm being honest. The, the, the lighting looks cool, but it's not correct. So my bad. So now we're adding all that tonal curve and color balance to kind of make it look like the finished artwork. And there's going to be a jump in time here pretty soon whenever I start to um, add the background and it kind of just pops into existence. I'm sorry again about that. I really wish I had recorded the background because it was kind of fun to make. Um, usually with backgrounds, I don't draw lines because drawing lines actually doesn't always make it look as good as it could. So now we're doing the line art. And since I can't figure out what to talk about during line art, I would like to take this opportunity to talk about commissions. Not for me, but instead warnings about commissions and things that you should and shouldn't do. So I made the horrible mistake uh, about two years ago to start taking on commissions and taking on too many. I then put myself in horrible situations by running out of money, then Oh, I ran out of money, better add another commission. Well, the problem is, the moment you start doing that, you got yourself backed up, and you put yourself in a slippery, slippery slope. Um, that happened to me, and it was a terrible situation, and I ended up having to get help to refund a bunch of people. And I did refund a bunch of people, and there are people who I finished their commission. At the end of the day, I should have been more responsible, and should have understood that the money is not mine until I finish it, obviously. I find a lot of people nowadays really can't trust artists because artists aren't responsible with money. And I'm gonna be honest, I was one of those people. And I had to stop myself, reevaluate, and fix that issue. 
and it was an issue. It was terrible, and I don't recommend anybody, anybody take commissions until they're fully responsible with their money. And for the most part, I've pretty much stopped doing them. So now that I've gotten that story out of the way, we are still only on the head. <laughs> ah, crap. Um, that's an arm. I draw them sometimes. But in all seriousness, um, be super responsible when it comes to other people's money and their time. Some people may not respect an artist's time, but we as artists have to respect our clients' time just as much as they have to respect ours. And if we waste their time and don't give them what they're promised, then we are not any better than the people artists complain about. It's, at the end of the day, it's our job to be responsible and responsible business owners and not waste people's time. Be the bigger person. If you can't commit, co finish the artwork, give them their money back. Man, I, I really love how the uh, apron turned out. It's so it's just so fun. And it's I know it's kind of a, a sexier artwork, but like I don't know. It's just like I love drawing frills. They're so cute. I'm just a weird dude who loves drawing frilly things. Um whether that says something about me or not, I'll let you guys decide. <laughs> But I just like drawing cute things. It's uh, Somebody asked me last video uh, if I draw men, and I do. I'm just not very good at them, if I'm being honest. Um, they end up looking too feminine. Um, I've recently been studying, like, um, like, from Death Note, how to draw men, just because that's always kind of a cool way. Um, there was also an old manga I used to read as a, in middle school called D and Angel. And D and Angel, I always liked how they drew the guys in that one. But I would obviously do it a little bit different now, personally. But yeah, here's where I added the uh, perspective ruler, but ended up deciding not to use it later because it didn't have the same dramatic movement to it that I kind of wanted. So now we're adding in the base colors and I went for kind of bright and happy. So yay, I love the little bow too in the hair, it's so cute. I know it's weird to talk about your own artwork and be like, oh, it's so cute, but like, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't have drawn it. I, I dropped so many works in progress but never finished them. It's nice to actually finish some and be proud of them, you know what I mean? So we're going to start adding some rendering here pretty soon. Man, yeah, that was just me adding the background back to the whole picture. Now I'm adding the shading. And the shading is pretty straightforward. Since the light is directly overhead, the shadows are pretty easy to predict. Um, even though I kind of didn't fully get it in my personal opinion, um, I still turned out alright. Mume is one of my favorite Hall Alive members. Her, Mori, and um, Bibu are some of my absolute favorites. I've also really gotten, gotten into Fauna lately as well. And, uh,. Crony is one that's just fun to draw just because I love the color blue, but I love her kind of deadpan personality. It's so funny. So yeah, I ended up just kind of carving out the light onto these uh, characters. I don't know why I said characters. These uh, clothes. That's the word I meant. The proper word. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this one. So you'll notice I use hue and saturation and kind of change colors if they aren't to my liking. Um, I'd recommend you do that too because it, it helps out a whole lot to uh, just adjust the hue and saturation and get the exact colors you're looking for. There we have some of the highlights on the hair. I ended up actually going in and changing the hair later but I forgot to record that so again sorry I kind of suck with uh, remembering to record things. So my bad. So now we're starting to add adjustments, make everything look proper, add some effects like add glow to make the hair really shine and stand out and make the reflections look so warm, a tonal curve to add some blue and pink into it, and some level correction to kind of even it out. There we 
go. Just adding some effects. Using hue and saturation to take away the colors to see if there are any areas that don't stand out from the background. And there we have it. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.